Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video and this will be the first ever video on our A-level chemistry revision series and it will be on mass spectrometry. Well before this there is one more chapter uh, but I just feel like the, uh, the need to cover atoms and atom notations is just unnecessary because it's, it's pretty much IJCSE knowledge to be fair and um, I'm pretty sure you all understand that. <laughs> So to start this mass spectrometry video off, let's just talk about isotopes. Elements in this world exist as natural isotopes. And the reason why it's important to understand this in mass spectrometry is that we are going to be dealing with samples. And what we want to do is to discover what isotopes are there within these samples, right? Okay. And to use uh, to find these, we need to use a mass spectrometer. So this is what the a basic the basic idea of the mass spectrometer looks like, okay? And the main aim of the mass spectrometer in order to find our, um, to find out what isotopes are in there, we're going to be finding out the mass to charge ratio, which is simply mass divided by charge, and the abundance of the, the isotopes uh, within the sample. So uh, I've uh, quite conveniently numbered out the, uh, the stages of mass spectrometry for you. So it's uh, easier to understand. So from the so when you finish watching this video, you will understand how mass to charge ratio is found and how the abundance is found. So that's pretty much it on mass spectrometry. Okay. So the first thing to do is to ionize your sample. So there are two ways in which you can ionize your sample. The first way is through electron impact ionization. This is this will be covered again in your um, next part, which is I think it's ionization energy. And what you're trying to do is bombard your, your isotopes, your sample, with high energy electrons. And uh, before that, I need to tell you that your sample must be at low pressure and it must be vaporized, okay? It must be in a gas state. So you bombard your sample, your vaporized sample, with high energy electrons. And your main aim is to knock out electrons, usually one electron, from your sample so that these isotopes form an ion, right? Awesome. Okay, so you, that's ionization. Um, shooting your isotopes with a lot of uh, electrons, high energy electrons, in order to knock one electron out, in order to form an ion. So the other way in which you can ionize your sample is through electron spray ionization. So what this is is you first of all dissolve your sample, your isotopes, in a volatile um, solvent, <coughs> and what you want to do is to inject this, um, inject this uh, sample, this dissolved sample, into your mass spectrometer, whereby it's going to pass through a high voltage needle, and this, at this stage, it will gain a proton. So if I call my sample M, when it gains a proton, the product I'm going to label as MH plus, and it is going to therefore have a positive charge now, and I'm going to keep it moving by moving it to a negative plate. So that's basically a moving, a simple moving um, po positive ion, ionized. So the next stage, after you've ionized your ions, okay, you ionized your isotope, sorry, you're going to accelerate it. And you're going to accelerate it through an electric field. And through this stage, it is going to have the same kinetic energy no matter the size of the atom. This is because the uh, kinetic energy gained when, some, when a charged particle passes through a constant electric field is equal to the, the charge multiplied by the electric field strength. Since they pass through the same electric field strength and they have the same charge from both ionizations, um, they're going to have the same kinetic energy. All right? so, we know from physics that kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared and the next step I'm going to do is to rearrange to get the speed and we're going to see the relationship between speed and mass. So the next step is to have it drift through um, this region called the uh, flight tube which is basically a long tube whereby you can measure the time. Okay, before that so we must understand that lighter ions will drift faster. So if you look at the equation, V is equal to the square root of 
uh, 2 times by the kinetic energy over mass, we can see that a lower mass will result in a higher speed, right? And similarly, a heavier mass will result in a lower speed. Okay, um, the different ions, therefore, will have uh, different masses and therefore different drift speeds and therefore different flight times, right? And they can therefore be uh, detected separately and detected uh, must be detection must be quite accurate. And if I'm going to label the distance which your ions travel through as uh, as so on your diagram, you can see that um, you know will know that time is equal to distance over speed, which is t over uh, d over v. And from the previous slide slides, we've talked about uh, we've rearranged v from kinetic energy for um, kinetic energy formula. And therefore, we can combine the top and bottom equations, t equals d over v, and the kinetic energy equation, in order to find time. Right. So time is therefore equal to the distance multiplied by the square root of mass over two times kinetic energy. And from this, we can rearrange in order to find mass. Voila! Right? So, from known values of kinetic energy, which is essentially electric potential energy that has been lost, which we can calculate um, from the acceleration stage, and the time which we can measure, which is essentially the time de uh, detected by the um, detect detector, and the distance, which is a controlled variable, we can uh, find the mass. And we can therefore find the all important mass over charge ratio. Okay? So that's part one done. That's we found the mass to charge ratio. Now you must find the abundance. So when the ions reach the det detector, a small current will therefore be produced each time an ion reaches the detector. Why is this? This is because when an when uh when electron I'm sorry, when an ion reaches the detector what happens is electron transfer. This is because you can imagine trying to contact a charged particle with a neutral particle, there will be electron, electron transfer from a lower potential to a higher potential. Okay? And therefore, the current is proportional to the rate of change of detection. As you can imagine, the more ions colliding into your neutral surface, the more electron transfer will take place. Ah, so therefore, a greater current. So the current will give us an indica indication of uh, the rate of detection of the ions. And therefore, for each of the isotopes, we can find out the abundance of the isotopes as through the rate of detection. And the abundance there will therefore be relative, which is what we want. So relative to each other. So that's it. From our knowledge of um, so so from de detecting the current, we can find out the abundance. So let's quickly summarize this video. The first things we need to do is to ionize our atoms, our isotopes, in order to get charged particles. So the ways in which we can do it are electron impact ionization and electrospray ionization. And the next stage is to accelerate it. So we pass our ionized atoms and isotopes into an electric field whereby they will accelerate with the same kinetic energy. And through der derivations, we have found the mass charge ratio with the following formula. And by detecting the current for each of the isotopes, we can therefore find the abundance of each of the isotopes relative to each other. So thank you very much for watching my video. I hoped I was able to help you and I wish you all good luck on your exams.